know if you guys can see that. That is a Black Widow and it's about the sixth one I've killed in here over the last week. Starting to cool off here in Utah. So they're starting to come indoors so it's time to spray again. I don't need to be getting bit and I don't need my kids getting bit so it's time to eradicate them. Gotta love it. What's going on guys? We got another one for you tonight. This one's pretty quick. Okay, so let's give you guys a look at what we got going here. So first I would like to say, I know it's been a couple weeks since I've uploaded a video. It's been crazy busy. I've got multiple quotes out right now that I'm waiting on large projects, which is a good thing for me. I did just pick up the largest job that I've had since I've been in business, so that's a good thing. We'll give you guys a look at that on one of the upcoming videos. I just wanted to tell you guys what was going on, why I haven't uploaded. It's just been crazy. I've had all these quotes that I've had to send. I've also had multiple projects that I couldn't put on YouTube because the customer didn't want them on YouTube. So I apologize, but we're gonna see if we can't get back on the bandwagon. So here's what we got tonight. So this is an aluminum water heater. Before everyone freaks out, whoa, whoa. I've got all the valves open. Every valve on this thing is open. It's vented. I've checked it with air that air is flowing through the tank. If you're welding on a tank, you always want to make sure that it's vented. Otherwise, it could cause pressure to build up and basically you're welding on a bomb. So we don't want to blow ourselves up. So I've got every valve open and like I said, I've checked it. Air blows through the whole vessel, so we're good. So this is where the damage is. There's two little holes here where it was rubbing, it looks like. And then there's one here. For some reason, the customer thought it was a good idea to pound those in. I'm not really sure why, but we're gonna go ahead and clean them up. It looks fairly thin, but I think it's gonna be manageable enough to weld so we'll go ahead and we'll just fill this up and then we'll get these ones cleaned up as well it looks like he's got a couple spots here that he wanted fixed apparently you just whack them with a hammer if that's where you want them fixed so we'll go ahead and get the welder rolled out and we'll see if we can't get these cleaned up and welded out tonight so I'll get the welder rolled out and then I'll show you guys how I plan on cleaning these up Okay, so to clean up these holes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up what I can with my die grinder here with my Scotch-Brite attachment. It's time for today's super cool tool. Alright guys, so for today's super cool tool, here's what we're going to be talking about. I know I've already mentioned our Milwaukee die grinder both the right angle and the straight die grinder. But one of the things that I haven't gone into detail on is this arbor. And it's got these twist lock Scotch-Brite attachments. So there's three different colors. There may be more, but the package that I get comes with three different colors. Brown is the most abrasive, and then red, and then blue is the softest. The way they work is they just have this little threaded twist lock system and on the die grinder you can see it's threaded there and you just stick it on there and twist that and that locks it in. I've had great luck with this one. I ended up purchasing this and the twist lock pads off of Amazon and I've had really good luck with them. I bought a bag of I want to say 60. I think it came with 20 of each color 
and I'll try to leave a link in the description. These right here are a game changer, specifically with aluminum, but with all types of metals. I use Scotch-Brite a ton on aluminum, a ton on stainless, and I even like to use some of these more abrasive ones on mild steel. If you're looking to get a good polish, these are awesome for that. If you use the brown pad, it's abrasive enough that you can actually grind spatter off and that's something that makes your life a lot easier because with this attachment you're able to get right up in corners and as I've said before the better you get with preparation and cleanup the better welder you're gonna be when you spend more time on cleanup and preparation it makes you a better welder the final product is a lot more appealing to look at and personally I believe it says more about your work because you care about what the final product looks like. Check out these Scotch-Brite pads. It's another tool in your arsenal to help you clean up your workpiece. And the more options you have, the easier it makes your life, the better it makes you as a fabricator, the final product looks better, and that speaks volumes for you as a fabricator. So check them out, get yourself a die grinder, get yourself an arbor that uses the twist lock scotch bright pads, and make yourself a better fabricator. Let's get back to the project. We'll hit these. The fact that he has dented them in, we've got to be able to clean up the material down in the bottom of that, and I don't think this is going to get down in there. I'll probably either have to take a wire brush and clean that up good, or I've got an actual Scotch-Brite pad in the toolbox that I can stick down in there and should be able to clean it up. So let's see how good we can get it without having to do that, and then we'll go from there. One of the biggest challenges you're going to have with aluminum is you've got to get it clean. If you don't get it clean, you're going to fight it. So you got to get it as clean as possible. Wire brush, scotch Bright. a lot of people wipe it down with acetone before they weld it. Anything you can do to get it as clean as possible will help you. See, I got those pretty clean. There's a little bit of discoloration down in the bottom. I'm hoping that will burn out once I strike the arc and start heating it up. So we're just gonna have to try it and see how it goes. You can see there is some pitting here. So I'm just gonna lay a patch over the top of these where there's pitting, and then we'll see if we can't fill these up. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to start with one of these smaller ones, probably over here where there's not a hole so I don't blow right through it. I just want to see how it goes. Okay, so it's definitely cooking some black stuff out of there, but it is going fairly well. Now I'm not going to grind this flat. I'm going to leave that weld the way it is so that it gives it some extra protection. You grind it flat and then you just you take it all that extra thickness away that's going to protect it in the future. So something like this, it's a water heater. Nobody's ever going to see it. So I'll go ahead and weld these patches on and I'll just leave them like that.
Okay, it's going well so far. We're gonna try one of these holes and I'm hoping it doesn't just blow out on me. So I'm actually gonna start outside of the hole. I'm gonna establish my puddle first, build up a good puddle, and then I'll start washing that puddle into the hole and hopefully it just fills right up and doesn't blow the hole out. the biggest one for the last. So this other spot that's got pitting on it, I'm gonna try that. Okay, last one. I've got a bigger divot I've gotta fill in there and it's the biggest hole, so here we go. Okay, so I got it filled up, but I'm gonna put one more over the top of it. So it's all patched up. I am going to polish those up just a little bit. So I'll go ahead and hit them with a little bit of Scotch-Brite and then I'll give you guys one more look. When I was cleaning it up with the brush, I found another little pinhole right here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. Anywhere that looks like this spot right here looks a little suspect, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just lay a patch over that. There's a couple little teeny spots right here. I don't want him to get it back and find out that it's still leaking, so I'll just hit anything that looks a little suspect. So we'll do that now. guys so let's go over the tank real quick I did go over those last couple spots that looked a little fishy to me so I got some good patches on those I don't know if I mentioned it earlier but this is a water heater that goes in a camp trailer customer couldn't afford to buy a new one right now so they figured they'd just patch this one see if it would work just trying to do the guy a favor I feel pretty good about it sealing up that's gonna wrap this one up I know it was a short one, but this is a pretty common repair in fabrication. I've done a lot of repairs on aluminum tanks, a lot of patches like this. I just figured it'd be a good one for you guys to see how I like to repair stuff like this. So, appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you on the next one. can grab some scotch bright I've got an actual scot I've got an act I've got an actual scotch bright holy moly if you use the dark brown if you use the brown if you use the brown attachment they're gonna
it's another tool in your 